Tonight we have nine of our 11 assistant governors this evening. And they're going to provide you an aerial view of District 6400. As each AG begins, our district map will zoom in on their area to illuminate. The dot for each club will be placed on the map in the club's location in the district di directory. AGs, could you come up, please? Get up. Chicago Bulls, right? Tammy Bonifil, number 11. Ann Chetty, area 10. Area 9, Wendy Parsons. Area 8, Chuck Chase. Oh, I'm taking his place. <laughs> Air, no, you're number four. One. Area 7, Don Lito. I'm taking his place too. Area 5, Sam Kennedy. Oh, okay, he's there. Area four, Aaron Dobbins. Area three, Terry Ryapel. Area one, I mean, area two. Oh, area two. Carrie Thorpe. Area six, Matt Hattie. Area one, Margaret Williamson. Margaret, would you step to the podium, please? And tell us about your area. Yeah, this is the podium. <laughs> okay. Well, we've gotten strict instructions, so I only have two and a half minutes to talk about the four fabulous clubs in Area 1. Those clubs being Detroit, Detroit AM, Gross Point, and Gross Point Sunrise. I'm going to just talk about a few of the projects that these clubs are involved with. And I will start with the Detroit Club. The Detroit Club, founded in 1910, will be 112 years old on July the 10th. And we this year have continued to work to provide service to our community. And one of the projects we undertook uh, in partnership with one of our launched Detroit entrepreneurs, Willie Brake, we distributed 26 pallets of masks, N95 masks, to churches, community organizations, and uh, first responders this year. Our Detroit AM Club sponsored a run along Lake St. Clair. Funds from that run allowed them to provide scholarships to high school seniors going to college. The Gross Point Club led a multi-district effort to support South Sudanese refugee camps in Uganda. The Gross Point, uh, the Detroit AM Club, since the beginning of the pandemic, has provided lunches once a month for uh, homeless persons being served by the neighborhood service organization. So despite the pandemic, despite the challenges, the clubs in Area 1, Gross Point, Gross Point Sunrise, Detroit AM, and Detroit have provided service and illuminated hope. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Gary, please. Hi, everybody. So I'm Carrie Thorpe for Area 2, and I'm going to take just a couple minutes to talk about our clubs. So I'm going to start with Dearborn Heights. <laughs> Woohoo! Dearborn Heights has done a fantastic job of rallying local businesses to help them with their fundraising by having the boxes in their businesses. 
And through that type of funding, they've been able to do a ton of programs. Just recently, they gave out 1,600 books to 200 different third graders in their area. They're getting ready and gearing up for their bike safety rally that's coming up. And during the bike, I'm sorry, bike safety rodeo. When they do the rodeo, they teach the kids some safety on their bikes, and that every kid that goes gets a helmet. Um, they also do environmental projects. We just planted 400 trees with them the other day. And importantly, coming up in September is the Clay Ryan Memorial Golf Outing, and there should be materials on that at the Dearborn Heights display over there. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about, Heinz Park PM, which is my club. Um, Heinz Park has been doing a lot of environmental programs, trail cleanups and cleaning up all the viaduct areas in the, off of Michigan Avenue in Dearborn to keep the sidewalks open and safe. Um, they also have done a lot of work recently with the underserved population in the area, either whether it's gathering money from good, for good fellows to get presents for every kid, sponsoring families for the holiday, or sponsoring the Eagle's Nest Food Bank and providing things for college students who might drop out because of food scarcity. Next up, I'll talk about Dearborn Rotary. Dearborn has a service project each month, and this is their 99th year of service. Um, this week on Tuesday, <laughs> yep, on Tuesday, or just this past Tuesday, they gave out $71,000 in scholarships to high school students um, stud who are going off to college for academics, but they also gave out scholarships for skilled trade students and for veterans. <laughs> and finally, I'll talk about Fairlane Sunrise. Fairlane Sunrise is small but mighty. They are a powerhouse when it comes to doing service work. They do more projects in a week than many clubs do in a month. So um, you've heard about their food programs, but maybe you haven't heard that they run a collaborative grant and help all of us put together packages of warm clothes for the students in their area. They also have done backpacks for all the students in their area. It's amazing to see. Thank you, Carrie. Terry? Area three. Hey, can you see me? Okay. <laughs> no, I don't want that. Um, <laughs> I had the pleasure to uh, get to know five fabulous clubs in the past three years. Every club had uh, challenges but found ways to push forward. What I'm about to say about the clubs only scratches the surface and may be repetitive but worthy of, rep of repeating. Belleville Club, founded in December of 1939, is back on track with many community projects assisting neighboring clubs and events, decorating and maintaining the local gazebo, supply dictionaries for third graders, and best of all, they have their Lucky Ducky race raffle back on track. Romulus, found in August of 1939, and they have rejuvenated themselves during this past break. Uh, currently working on fundraisers, refurbished four little libraries in need of TLC. Best of all, they have partnered with the Rotary Club of Nigeria, to benefit the local trade college, raising funds to purchase supplies and collect gently used uh, new tools, large and small, enough to fill a shipping container to send to the school. Huron Township, founded in February 1939, planted trees, hosts a free community picnic, they're on their fourth annual beer fest, and host what is deemed the social events of the year in Huron Township, which is the daddy-daughter dance and the mother-son superhero dance. In December, thank you. In December, the members turn into the local Goodfellows and No Child Without a Christmas. Westland, founded in October of 1966, overcame the challenges and is thriving. With a recent family jamboree they sponsored in Westland that provides a lot of community information along with spotlighting service groups. And let's, my final club is Wayne. They were founded in January 1922, making this their 100th year celebration. <laughs> Woohoo! 
from making a considerable donation to the Wayne Public Library, building, the fr building a little free library, provo providing support to Hope Not Handcuffs, as well as supporting Families Against Narcotics, distribution of dictionaries to every third and fourth grader in Wayne, and What's a Summer Without Concerts in the Park. These clubs are so full of activities, events, and passion. I encourage you to reach out to a member of all the clubs that I have just talked about or talk to your local AG. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Aaron Dobbin. Area. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Aaron Dobbins. I'm with Area 4. Our area consists of Allen Park, Lincoln Park, Southgate, and Taylor Rotary Clubs. Southgate has done a phenomenal job showing the spirit of Rotary by partnering with another organization, the Toastmasters, to help grow membership and become more prominent in the community. They created a hybrid meeting option and operate a satellite club. Special recognition goes to President Chris Steves for taking our Area 4 polio dolls to many events including the polio awareness booth at our multi-club scarecrow stroll in October. The Lincoln Park Rotary Club suffered a tremendous loss this year with the passing of key leader Don Cush, but the club persevered and continued to do community service with their pancakes and police annual breakfast and backpack programs. They added a new member to the club under the leadership of President Everett Thomas and started a new service project to clean and maintain the grave sites of military veterans. Allen Park Rotary is special indeed. The current president is the esteemed past district governor, Donna Schmidt. Donna went above and beyond to lead the club once again. Under her leadership, the Allen Park Rotary hosted a very successful memorial golf outing, grew membership, and coordinated a beautiful celebration of the club's 75th anniversary. All this while putting this intricate district conference together that we're all enjoying now. Thank you, Chairperson Donna, and all the support of Allen Park Rotarians who stood behind her this year. The Taylor Rotary Club is my home club. Our president this year, past District Governor Lawrence Wright, is a very passionate and accomplished Rotarian. President Larry has done a tremendous job to grow our club's membership with a focus on fellowship and fundraising. This year, Taylor Rotary Business Alliance was formed, connecting local leaders and the community to key government staff and officials. Our club continued with several service projects, including partnering with the Taylor Goodfellows to support needs presented through our city clerk's office. I just wanted to say thank you to Larry for being my Rotary sponsor and mentor. Sam, Area 5. Good evening. The, uh, I'm going to talk to you about Area 5. Area 5 was named because it has five clubs in it. It, it also is in the extreme northwest corner of the map of the district, so that tells you a little bit about where we are. The, uh, I'm going to start with Northville. You heard a lot this morning from Jennifer Walker, who is the president. Um, but I want to uh, say a word about another Northville Rotarian. You know, R Rotary is a, an organization of leaders. And last December, there was a terrible tornado in Kentucky. And while that was bad news for most of us, it was real bad news for uh, Bob Buckhav who's a Northville Rotarian. He had family in the way of that storm. And he took on the leadership of the club and clubs around and the entire district to get an enormous amount of uh, help down to Kentucky in order to help those people. Uh, excellent move. Also for Northville, Northville has a, uh, a distinction that no other club in the district has. You know what it is? Maybe. It's going, it's going to be the house, the uh, home club of our uh, incoming uh, district governor, Tracy Sincock. So the, 
next one, next coming up, Plymouth. Plymouth is the largest club in, uh, in the district, in the district, it, largest club in the area. Uh, Dale Yagella is president. He's not able to be here. Uh, this club is going to be 100 years old in 2004, so that's coming up. Uh, they had a host of projects that they worked on, but the one that makes uh, perhaps the most, uh, two things that I got to talk to. One is they got the chicken dinner back on schedule. It's made 8,000 chicken dinners. They're coming. And they put on a, they hosted and arranged a, a school safety forum with several schools. Uh, Plymouth AM, which happens to be my club, president is uh, Chris Kelly. We're the ones that put a, a scarecrow Rotarian in Kellogg Park in the middle of Plymouth and there for a month told the story of what's going on. So that's good. Uh, Passport to Service is a virtual club. I got I to tell you this. The uh, uh, virtual clubs have their challenges, but one of the things they did that I'm going to point out to you, but I haven't got time to explain to you, is the best possible dinner fundraiser. Ask somebody about that, uh, because you'll be very surprised about how it went, went out. What I will tell you is it produced enough money to pay for 3,175 polio vaccinations. <laughs> Finally, Canton Rotary, Barry Burnham, president, uh, he Barry has been a master of putting uh, teams together. He's gotten uh, a, a tremendous amount of uh, uh, Indian uh, men and women who live and work in Canton, but have not been associated with Rotary. Uh, he's worked that out, made that work very well. So he is uh, a bit of a rock star. Uh, however, the thing he did that uh, you're going to hear about, I think, later in this program, not necessarily tonight, uh, he, he, he set up the first twinned club in our district. Barry Burnham. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Matt Hattie, Area 6. Hi, as Ed said, I'm Matt Hattie from Area 6 and the Trenton Rotary Club. Um, one of our clubs is uh, the Gibraltar Rockwood Rotary Club, led by President Todd Taylor. It encompasses the communities of Gibraltar, Rockwood, and southeastern part of Brownstown Township, sharing a zip code and the school district. They are 21 members strong and growing. Their three main fundraisers are the Muskrat Dinner, the Gun -a Day Raffle, and the combination Kayak Poker Run Rubber Duck Race. Through those fundraisers, they raise over $20,000, which goes back to the serving the students, schools, and their community. The Grozeal Rotary Club is led by President Roberto Sanchez. Um, their club has worked very hard this year in solidifying the leadership so that Grozeal can continue to remain a strong club and carry forth all the service that they do for their local schools and community for the next several years. The Trenton Rotary Club is led by Valerie DeZagulonas. And now I say your name wrong, Val, sorry. Um, it's been established since 1937 and is 74 members strong. The membership, well, 47% of the membership has been there at least 16 years, so we do retain our members pretty well. We are people of action who take pride in doing endless work serving others. They embrace Rotary's seven causes and work hard to ensure that they are making a difference and creating a better world. The Woodhaven Brownstown Rotary is led by President Barb Smith. It is a small but very impactful club. They partner with their community and so they're able to strengthen their outreach for the children, veterans, and first responders. Their signature events include warm coats for kids, Thanksgiving groceries, and the special needs fishing derby which is actually this Wednesday, May 18th. And the fifth club in my area is the Wyandotte Rotary Club, led by President Joe Gruber. It was chartered in 1939 and currently has 40 members. This club has remained very active in many aspects of the community, including playground and park development, 
food and toy drives for underserved families, and numerous other fundraisers. They are a, uh, a tight-knit club with strong foundation of camaraderie and friendship among the members, and they work closely with the neighboring clubs throughout the Downriver area. Uh, some of their favorite charities include Blessings in a Backpack and the Wyandotte Police Department Shop with a Cop, Cop Program. Thank you, Matthew. I am going to cover Area 7 for Don Lido. Area 7 is comprised of four clubs, Monroe, Carrollton, Dundee, and Flat Rock. Start with Monroe. Monroe was chartered in 1924 by an Ann Arbor club. Uh, their signature event is Breakfast for Santa. They do a Christmas card gift to 100 children, I mean, of $100 to 300 kids. Also, uh, Christmas and Easter special with the Interact Club from St. Mary's. Uh, Monroe has 50 members at this particular time. Carrollton, chartered in 1937 by Flat Rock. Recently, they've been awarded United Way's Everyday Hero Award for 9-11 bags that are given to police departments for autistic children. They found that it de-escalates the situation when they encounter uh, autistic children. Uh, the bags have in them, if you're not familiar with them, squeeze toys, weighted blankets, and things along that line that are shown to comfort kids. Um, if you're not familiar with this and you'd like to start it in your community, I would suggest that you get in touch with Chris Moe, the president of that club, or Andy Starzak, the lieutenant that you saw on stage today. He is on the board of Mimi's Mission, which supplies the 9-11 bags. Carlton also does wagons for wheelchairs. Moving on to Dundee. Dundee was founded in 2008 or chartered in 2008 by Monroe. They currently have six members. In Christmas, they adopted a family of 12 individuals and gave them $3,000 to help with their Christmas. They also have Christmas poinsettia fundraiser every year. Flat Rock, chartered in 1928. They have six members, by, and they were chartered by Ypsilanti. Uh, Allison Smith is the president there. They just did a fundraiser, uh, Battle of the Bands, and raised $3,000 for scholarships. Area 8. Area 8 I'm going to talk to you about from Chuck Chase. That was the Adrian Noon Club. Uh, the Goldson's Club was chartered in 1921 by Jackson. The big event there is the Centennial Celebration focusing on members. And they also have a unique project that they do. They do a welcome back of college kids with water and snacks when they come back home for college. Annual bike ride for beautiful Lenaway County. Adrian Morning, Week, weekend snacks for children in middle school and in grade school. Uh, this is important because you know how meals are important to a good portion of our population, our school kids. So they do this on weekends to make sure that they have uh, something to eat on weekends. They also donate to the Boys and Girls Club. Number three, Blissville, chartered in 1934 by Richmond. Their big event is a Halloween and bonfire festival. Clinton, chartered in 1940 by Tecumseh. Clinton has a program of cover Clinton and flags, and they have a huge golf outing. Tecumseh did not send any information in, but their biggest event is a Christmas tree sale at Christmas time. They were chartered in 1928 by the Adrian Club. Area nine, Wendy. Hi guys, I'm Wendy with Area 9 and we are the Southwestern Ontario Clubs and I would just like to start off by saying you didn't see us uh, for our doll challenge. Uh, 
Uh, we were going to plan to do Cornholio for polio, and unfortunately, due to COVID circumstances, we've had to uh, put that on hold for a few times, so uh, it, it just got postponed. However, let's go to our clubs. Amherstburg, it's, they saw a need for a basketball court in their town of 22,000. The district grant funds were used towards this project. With this popular addition, the town maintains upkeep and, and people of all ages take advantage of this upgraded facility. Cottam, after two, a two-year hiatus, Cottam is excited to bring their annual fall festival and community festival back. This one-day event offers fun for the entire family at no cost to all those that attend. Essex has completed a couple of drive through fish fries and on May 29th, we'll be helping out their fellow Rotarians in LaSalle by cooking for them at their car show. Then in June, be sure to look at, out for Feast in a Field and come and experience dinner in a silo. Harrow, we all know where Harrow is. As <laughs> that's the spot where we get to go meet the governor night this year, Tuesday, June 29th, if you didn't know. And Harrow is a very small community with so much passion that illuminates hope all around the world. From their duck race to participating in community events, helping by doing seniors, delivering cards at, at Christmas time, uh, to one Rotarian who went above and beyond by making and selling flower arrangements, raising $4,000 for Ukraine. I thought that was good. <laughs> Kingsville South Shore held their third annual cleanup in Kingsville, and it was a massive success. A few years ago, when Kingsville Club started, they wanted to do a community cleanup and had 10 members out to help. Last year, after they're moving their date multiple times, again, COVID, 50 people came out and they collected about 1,000 pounds of garbage. This year was icing on the cake. 19 teams came out in full force with over 100 volunteers collecting 1,400 pounds of garbage. They have six new garbage cans placed around town, and they were able to raise their annual youth fund for scholarships to $3,000. <clears> this year, Leamington's signature event will be held on Thursday, June 16th. Members of the community are invited to walk, wine, and dine, experiencing nine different restaurants, starting at the Bank Theatre for appetizers and finishing at the Art Centre for dessert and silent auction. This fundraiser is a twofold, helping our hardest hit restaurant sector that struggled through COVID and all the monies raised will be going to youth mental health in Leamington. Leamington hopes to showcase the many different cultures in their town. And Area 9 and 10 clubs participated once again in the 24-hour Gleanathon, collaboration at its best. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. And Chetty. Thank you, Ed. Good evening, everybody. I am the uh, assistant governor of Area 10 in the uh, Windsor-Essex area. Um, the first cl uh, club that I want to talk to you about is the Rotary Club of Windsor 1918 and the Satellite Club of Windsor, uh, Windsor 1918. Their signature event, everybody knows Art in the Park, and it's coming back this year uh, for, you know, after the hiatus. Uh, this, this event attracts 20,000 people over this two-day event. With the hard work of Rotarians and community partners, money is raised for the benefit of both. Uh, everyone in the community looks forward to Art in the Park every year. Vendors come from across Canada, and it has become one of the most recognized um, art events in Canada. They are proud of their go God, Dr. Godfrey Bachia for his uh, work in Ghana. Dr. Bachia was recognized in December for all of his work there. And this is the Rotary Club of Windsor 1918. The Rotary Club of Windsor St. Clair is a mighty club. They developed the Ganatio Trail in Windsor and continue to enhance the natural habitat on Pesh Isle in partnership with the city of Windsor. 
They have donated over $600,000 to the Heart and Stroke Foundation over the years and the Windsor Regional Cancer Center of over $100,000. They undertook the construction of a boundary-free playground in partnership with the town of Tecumseh. They planted tulips at the Rotary Roundabout at Manning and Riverside for Canada's 150th birthday celebration. They financed and installed lights on bicycles for migrant workers in Leamington and they challenge other Rotary Clubs in the community to give blood in February and March of every year. This year, they purchased and delivered 720 pounds of fresh apples to distribute to local community organizations. And of course, they are especially known for their annual Rotary TV auction, which raises funds so they can continue all of this awesome work. The The next club is uh, Rotary Club of Windsor Roseland. This is a club near and dear to my heart, my home club. We are known for our annual uh, fundraisers, uh, Lobster Fest in May, May the 27th this year, and Wines of the World in the fall. We are so proud to be the home of the District Governor, Aruna, in 2021, 2022 and Rotary International President Jennifer Jones in 2022-2023. This club recently embarked on a civil, civic beautification project at Jackson Park, and we've supported several international projects including mental health in Miami-Dade County, literacy in Guatemala, and providing artificial limbs to individuals in need, and most recently, for transportation for expectant mothers in Chennai, India. That's what the Rotary Club of Windsor Roseland. The Rotary Club of Windsor Walkerville is a small but mighty club. They work in partnership with other Rotary Clubs to harness the power of Rotary. They do work locally and overseas in their own quiet way. Walkerville members are making the world a better place every day by helping young professionals become future leaders. And the last club in my area is the Rotary Club of LaSalle Centennial. Woohoo! This Rotary Club is known as a water club because it has brought life saving water to over 20 locations in India, Mexico, and Malawi. The first half of the Wasambo water project in Malawi, uh, the construction of a 500,000 liter tank is now complete and the water system is now under construction. Another point of pride is the reintroduction of youth exchange this year. They have sponsored an outbound student who is going to Peru and their inbound student will be arriving soon from Mexico. And they're, yes, I'm very excited. Uh, President, uh, President Mary, Mary Lou Amlin is going to be hosting um, that uh, student in her home. So it's very exciting. Um, their Crystal Drop Gala every February is always a beautiful and elegant fundraising event. And of course, Big Hats and High Tea, which just uh, happened uh, two weekends ago, uh, raises funds every year for a local project. So this is our proud Area 10 of Super District 6400. Thank you so much, Anne. Tammy, Area 11. Hi, I'm Tammy Bonifield. I'm in the new Area 11. I'm happy to say that I am the first assistant governor in Area 11, and we have four awesome clubs. Our first club that I'm going to talk about tonight is Redford. Redford is really struggling. <laughs> they have um, not been able to come back from COVID, so I, what we're trying to do is get them reactivated. So if you guys have anything that you need a couple extra people for, they are very service-oriented, maybe not so much on the meeting side. So reach out, and we're trying to get them re-energized, and we're going to try and work with them to be... Um, maybe a, a, a service-oriented club rather than a meeting club. The second club that I have is Garden City. Um, they are a really great club. I was able to go down and talk to them and really amazing people. Um, one of the things that they've done is the Burger Transition Food Pantry. 
Uh, I thought a very unique fundraiser that they did was the, um, at Barson's Greenhouse, they partnered with them to get 10% of their sales. So I thought that was a really nice way to raise funds without utilizing a lot of your volunteer resources and also partner, partnering in the community. Um, they also do uh, Christmas at the school. Garden City is very active in the school district. They have the superintendent and several other people who are in the school district. Um, and they partner with Kiwanis to do this. Um, they wrap presents and have a Christmas party. Uh, the new club in Livonia is um, a great club, and I was happy to be able to go in and do my very first uh, assistant governor installation uh, for one of their new members. And uh, he happened to be a young gentleman that I had run against uh, in school board elections, so that was kind of, and beat, so that was kind of interesting. Um, the Livonia Club also does their Easter egg hunt, um, and they had a great day for it. The Easter Bunny arrived, so that was very exciting. Uh, Livonia has a really great career and technical center, and they gave out a scholarship for a vocational training student. Uh, she was very happy to get that. And one of the struggles that Livonia had this year was finding a new location. So I'm sure that we can all kind of get along on board with that, because <laughs> the new meetings are pretty tough sometimes. And then my club, Livonia AM, and I have to say, I am so excited to be a Rotarian right now. Our club is energized. We've uh, begun doing fantastic hybrid meetings. Uh, one of our members has uh, done a couple of uh, uh, presentations on doing the hybrid meetings. And we do the touch-a-truck. So this last year, we were able to get our touch-a-truck going again, and we had over 5,000 people at uh, the Greenmead Park in Livonia. Thank you. AGs, would you stay on stage? I want to thank you very much, and it's been a, really an honor to be your dean. You know, it's cliche to say, at least they say it's cliche, to say that Rotary is about the people, but it really is.